Hi, this is Matt from Dimensional Nomad Games, and these are my favorite cards from Almonket for Commander. So the first card we're going to start off with is the Cascading Cataracts. It's uh, one of the new rare lands from the set. Um, there are a couple of really good things about the cards. First is that it's indestructible. Uh, indestructibility on lands is uh, very nice to have. There's only a few indestructible lands, uh, Darksteel Citadel being um, the only one that comes to mind immediately. It taps for a waste mana, but more importantly, it lets you filter. Now, the nice thing about it is that you can take a colorless mana source, such as a Soul Ring and a Thran Dynamo, and turn that into any color. So you can use it in a single color, or even up to a five color. <clears throat> and the, that's just great, in my opinion. Um, next, we come to the artifacts. The first artifact I want to talk about uh, is the Pyramid of the Pantheon. Now, the Pyramid of the Pantheon has... Pay two, tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and then you put a brick counter on it. And then you can, uh, once you have three or more brick counters on it, it taps for three of any one color. So it's really powerful. Uh, it scales really well. It's color fixing at the beginning, and then after just a few uses, uh, it turns into a really strong, um, basically a cheaper tiered version of... Uh, Gilded Lotus. Uh, the other artifact I'd like to talk about is the Oracle's Vault. Uh, cost 4, has ability of pay 2, tap, exile the top card of your library, and until the end of turn you can play that card. Uh, and then uh, you put a counter on it, and then eventually, just like with the other artifact, if you have 3 or more counters, that ability turns into a free ability. So those are, those are fun. I can see a lot of just goofy things being played off the top, instant speed. Um, and who doesn't like being able to play just any card in their deck? All right, so moving on to multicolor, we have Samu, Voice of Descent. She costs three, a green and a red. Um, she is a three, four, flash, double strike, vigilance, haste, and other creatures you have haste. And then she has white, tap to untap another target creature. So you've got her in the um, really fun colors. I can see her being a nice enabler for other decks. Um... I'm not sure how viable she is personally as a commander because she's more about helping the rest of your cards, but I definitely see her having a lot of uh, a lot of use for other commander decks. And then, of course, Hapatra, the Vizier of Poisons, costs a green and a black for a 2-2 that says whenever deals combat damage to a player, you may put a Negwin Negwin counter on target creature, and whenever you put one or more Negwin Negwin counters on a creature, create a 1-1 uh, green snake creature token with death touch there's a lot of negative counter effects out there a lot of people build infect decks i can see her being a really powerful uh infect commander or just a janky negwin negwin commander with things like contagion engine all right so moving on to green we have the champion of ronis for three and a green you get a three three uh jackal warrior that you may exert to drop a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. Now exert is a new mechanic that says um, it doesn't untap during your next untap step but there's lots of ways to untap creatures especially in green so it's basically just a way to attack and drop a, a free creature onto the, full, onto the field. Uh, my other favorite creature from green is the Vizier of the Menagerie. Uh, it's three and a green for a three four that lets you look at the top card of your library at any time and you can cast the top card of your library uh, if it's a creature card. Uh, the other really nice thing is that you can use mana of any type uh, to cast creatures, uh, your creature spells. So it's a really nice color fixture. It's a cheaper version of Garruk's Horde. Now Garruk's Horde is a 7-7 Trample. So the three mana difference between the two uh, gives you the lower power and toughness and no Trample. But I think being able to get it out early and being able to use the uh, any combination of mana makes it a lot more useful card. All right, now moving on to white. We have Anointed Procession. Now, this is a really nice mana doubler, not mana doubler, token doubler. For a three and a white, you get an enchantment that says, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many uh, tokens instead. Now, we already have this effect in green. Now, it's nice to have it in a mono white, plus it gives you just another one for a lot of those token builds or are predominantly green-white. So, between this, doubling season, and... Um, 
parallel lives, you get eight times the tokens every time you make a token. All right, so the other card that I really liked is in white is Vizier of Remedies. For one in a white, you get a 2-1 creature that says, if one or more Neg-1, Neg-1 counters would be put on a creature you control, that many Neg-1, Neg-1 counters minus one are put onto it instead. So if you're doing a global Neg-1 counter uh, strategy, for instance, you play black-white, give Pestilence Demon uh, Infect, for one black, you give every creature except for your own a Neg-1, Neg-1 counter. Uh, not to mention, in fact, just kills everybody, so for 10 black, you just win the game anyway. Don't do that. That's a janky thing to do. All right, so moving on to blue, we have As Foretold. So for two and a blue, you get an enchantment that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on As Foretold. And then once each turn, you may pay zero, rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with converted mana cost X or less, where X is the number of time counters on As Foretold. Now, the thing that makes this so powerful is that it says X or less. So you can just uh, make it better and better and better. It's a lot better than things like Ether Vial, which are exactly equal to the number of counters. Um, and Commander, it lets you play your Commander once you get up to four. Uh, I know a lot of people are using this for things like Atraxa um, and just a lot of other things because you can really ramp it out and basically play one spell for free, uh, any card you want out of your deck. Well, once you've got it in hand anyway. Uh, the other fun card that I like in blue is Drake Haven. For two and a blue, you get an enchantment that says, whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. And if you do, create a 2-2 blue Drake creature token with flying. And who doesn't like flying Drake tokens? Um, lots of ways to discard or cycle hands, especially for blue. So you can definitely uh, get a lot of mileage after this one. Um, especially, I think, with Kylie, <clears throat> the uh, cycle commander anyway, you're going to be cycling your hand. Tap her to pay one for each card to discard and get that many 2-2 flying Drake tokens. So I think that's a pretty fun strategy. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what other decks that ends up ending up in. All right, now moving on to black, we have Archfiend of Ifnir. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's for three and two black. You get a 5-4 flying demon that says, whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a neg one, neg one counter on each creature your opponent's control. It also has cycling of two. Now... Um, this set already has a bunch of cycling and discard effects, but black uh, especially has a bunch of global discard. So like um, the original Liliana, where everyone discards a card, give all of their creatures neg one counters. Play that with Hapatra, and they get even more neg counters, and you get all the creatures. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the other card I really like in black is Trespasser's Curse. For a black and one, you get an enchantment or a curse that goes on a player and says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under the enchanted player's control, that player loses one life and you gain a life. This is really fun against um, recursion decks or token decks where they're just throwing creatures left and right. You're going to get a lot of value out of this, especially if you pair it with other things that um, are incremental. You know, where you're gaining life and paying life and... And things like that. So I think that's going to get a lot of mileage in a lot of different decks. All right. Now moving finally on to red, we have Soul Scar Mage. For one red, you get a one-two human wizard with prowess that says, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many neg one neg one counters on that creature instead. So basically, it gives all your non-camp non-combat damage effects wither, and that's just fun, especially in red. Um, who doesn't like burning down invincible creatures like the indestructible Avacyn? You could bolt her and give her neg three, neg three, turn her into a five, five flying. And that's fun for one mana. Uh, finally, we have Harsh Mentor, who for one and a red, you get a two, two human cleric that says, whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh Mentor deals two damage to that player. Um, especially in Commander, we have all kinds of fun abilities going off. We have creatures that tap to do things. We have artifacts that tap to do things, which a bunch of them already mentioned. And you see a lot of those um, just in Commander. I would love to see what this does to a De uh, Derevi player, where all they do is tap things, or you know, a lot of the Flicker players, because it's even just uh, it's not even tap abilities; it's just activated abilities. Anything with a colon on it, even. So I think it's going to get a lot of use in Commander. Anyway, those are my favorite cards from Amonkhet. 
Um, as new sets come out, I will continue to review them and talk about them. I also talk about uh, my eclectic decks. I like to build decks with fun themes and uh, different uh, tribals. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy.